Lesson 1, Maintaining a Respectful Attitude Anna, I wanted to ask you about how to maintain a respectful attitude in conversations, especially when discussing sensitive topics. That's an important question, John. One key aspect is to listen actively and attentively to the other person's perspective. Active listening is crucial. It shows that we value their opinions and allows for a more respectful exchange of ideas. Absolutely. It's also important to ask questions to gain a better understanding of their viewpoint, rather than making assumptions. Asking questions helps promote dialogue and shows a genuine interest in learning from the other person's experiences. Another tip is to avoid interrupting. Give the person a chance to express themselves fully before responding. That's a good reminder. Interrupting can be disrespectful and hinder effective communication. Additionally, use I statements to express your own thoughts and feelings instead of making sweeping generalizations about the other person. I statements help keep the focus on your perspective without attacking or belittling the other person's viewpoint. It's also important to be aware of your body language and nonverbal cues. Maintain open and relaxed posture to show respect. Nonverbal cues can speak volumes. Being mindful of our body language helps convey a sense of openness and respect. When discussing sensitive topics, it's crucial to approach the conversation with empathy and understanding. Empathy plays a vital role in maintaining respect. Putting ourselves in the other person's shoes helps foster a more harmonious discussion. Lastly, if the conversation becomes heated or tense, it's okay to take a break and revisit the topic when emotions have settled. Taking a break can be a wise decision. It allows for reflection and ensures that the conversation remains respectful and productive. I'm glad you brought up this topic, John. Maintaining a respectful attitude is essential for healthy and constructive conversations. I believe it's crucial to foster an environment where differing opinions can be shared respectfully. Thank you for your insights, Anna. You're welcome, John. I appreciate your openness to learning. Let's continue to engage in conversations with respect and understanding. Absolutely, Anna. Here's to promoting respectful dialogue and building stronger connections through mindful and considerate communication. Lesson 2, Effective Communication in Hospitality Anna, we had a late check-in at the hotel last night, and they seemed unaware of our arrival. I'm not sure what happened. That's frustrating, John. Did you inform them in advance about your late check-in? Yes, I sent them an email a few days ago, clearly stating our expected arrival time. In that case, it's important to address the issue calmly and effectively. I suggest speaking with the hotel staff about the miscommunication. You're right, Anna. It's crucial to approach the conversation with a calm and understanding demeanor. When you speak to the hotel staff, clearly explain the situation and provide any evidence, such as the email you sent. 
That makes sense. Providing evidence will help them understand that there was indeed a miscommunication. Remember to use a polite and respectful tone during the conversation. It helps maintain a positive atmosphere and encourages cooperation. I agree. Being polite and respectful will facilitate a more constructive dialogue with the hotel staff. Additionally, active listening is essential. Give the staff an opportunity to explain their side of the story and listen attentively. Active listening is a valuable skill. It shows that we value their perspective and helps find a resolution. If necessary, ask questions to seek clarification and ensure that both parties are on the same page regarding the miscommunication. Asking questions will help clarify any misunderstandings and prevent future issues. During the conversation, remain focused on finding a solution rather than placing blame. It promotes a collaborative approach. Finding a solution is the goal. It's important to work together with the hotel staff to address the miscommunication effectively. If the issue remains unresolved after speaking with the staff, Politely request to escalate the matter to a supervisor or manager. Escalating the matter to a higher authority may be necessary if the initial conversation doesn't lead to a satisfactory resolution. Remember to maintain a professional demeanor throughout the process, even if you feel frustrated. It will help achieve a positive outcome. I'll keep that in mind, Anna. It's crucial to remain professional and composed, even in challenging situations. I'm confident that by approaching the conversation with effective communication skills, you'll be able to resolve the issue smoothly. Thank you for your guidance, Anna. I appreciate your support. Here's to effective communication and resolving the miscommunication. Cheers to that, John. May your conversation with the hotel staff be productive, and may the miscommunication be resolved to your satisfaction. I'll strive for a positive outcome. Thank you once again, Anna. Your advice is invaluable. Lesson 3. Choosing Accommodations, Hotel or Lodge? Anna, I'm planning a trip and trying to decide between booking a hotel or a lodge for accommodations. What do you think? That's a great question, John. It depends on the kind of experience you're seeking. Hotels offer convenience and amenities, while lodges provide a more rustic and nature-oriented experience. I see. I value convenience, but I also enjoy being close to nature. What are some advantages of staying in a hotel? Hotels often provide a range of services such as room service, housekeeping, and amenities like pools or fitness centers. They can be a convenient option if you prefer a more luxurious and pampered stay. That sounds appealing. Having those services readily available can make the trip more relaxing and enjoyable. What about lodges? Lodges are typically located in scenic and natural surroundings. They offer a closer connection to nature and often provide activities like hiking, wildlife viewing, or outdoor adventures.
Being in nature and engaging in outdoor activities sounds fantastic. I like the idea of exploring the surroundings. Are lodges generally more budget friendly? Lodges can be a more budget friendly option, especially if you're looking for a nature focused experience. They often offer cabin style accommodations, which can be more affordable than upscale hotels. Affordability is definitely a factor to consider. It's good to know that lodges can provide a budget friendly option while still offering a unique experience. Do lodges have any amenities? While lodges may not have the same range of amenities as hotels, they usually provide essential facilities like comfortable beds, private bathrooms, and common areas for relaxation. That sounds reasonable. As long as the basic amenities are available, I'm open to experiencing a more rustic setting. Are there any specific locations where lodges are popular? Lodges are often found in scenic areas like national parks, mountains, or forests. Places known for their natural beauty tend to have a variety of lodges for visitors to choose from. Exploring national parks and mountains has always been on my bucket list. Staying in a lodge would be a great opportunity to immerse myself in those surroundings. It sounds like a wonderful adventure, John. Whether you choose a hotel or a lodge, consider what kind of experience you want and what amenities are important to you. Absolutely, Anna. I'll weigh the options and consider what aligns best with my preferences and budget. Thank you for your insights and guidance. You're welcome, John. I'm glad I could help. Whichever choice you make, I hope you have a memorable trip filled with enjoyable accommodations and remarkable experiences. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate your well wishes. Here's to choosing the perfect accommodations and embarking on a memorable journey.